There's nothing like the chat the morning after a wedding. Who cut up the dance floor? Who had too much to drink? Whose speech was a bit cringe? And of course... Who f***ed on the floor at my wedding? Yes, you heard that right. When brides Helen McLaughlin and Karen Whitehouse headed to their reception, they had no idea what the night had in store. I just stopped in my tracks because I saw a huge in the middle of the floor. Their horror turned into morning after chat, which turned into month after chat, and eventually they decided to let the rest of the world in on their conversation by turning it into a podcast. The newlyweds recruited Kiwi Lauren Kilby to play detective, and she left no stone unturned. So, pen the tail in the crime scene, the tail becomes the poo, and the bathroom is the crime scene. Joining us now from Amsterdam is Kiwi investigator and podcast host Lauren Kilby. How did you get this job, Lauren? I don't think you have any professional qualifications as a private detective, do you? No, I have zero qualifications, <laughs> and that is why I am the best. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that. <laughs> well, I guess, like, to in order to be able to do things that you're normally not allowed to do by law, um, it's best to remain unqualified because then you <laughs> technically aren't breaking any rules. And I don't need to apply for things like warrants. You know, I just go into someone's house if I want to. And <laughs> just, uh... Okay, so your main qualification is you were at the wedding. <laughs> um, what, do you think, what do you think people love about the story so much? I think a lot of people have a very, very similar or a story that they can kind of relate this to. I don't know I don't know if this is a thing that hasn't been addressed until now. But a lot of people I think a lot of people have a very similar story and and they like hearing about those kinds of stories for some weird reason. Uh, in the case that you're working on, do, have you found out who it was? Uh, you'll have to listen to determine that. No, <laughs> you can't get us on that. No, I need you to pin you, this you on someone. You don't want a spoiler. <laughs> you don't want a spoiler. So why haven't you solved it? Why haven't I solved it? Yeah. Well, let me ask you, if you had accidentally or on purpose shat on the floor at a wedding, would you be coming forward and saying it was you who did it? <laughs> no, I would not. But you've got a limited number of suspects on a boat. Surely, mm. surely you can narrow it down to one person. I have successfully narrowed it down to a few people. Um, there's one person I can't uh, get access to um, who you... Yeah, essentially they were... Um, one of the entertainers on the boat, um, and they aren't officially a wedding guest, so they're very hard to get access to, to question. Um, and, yeah, and going back to the detective skills, this is where being a real detective would actually come in handy because I would actually be able to go and arrest that person. Yeah. But this is, this is kind of where, it, where it's a bit difficult. Hmm. Have you thought about the fact that whoever did this may be very regretful, has found out you've got a podcast and is living their life in constant terror at being unmasked. Yes, I hope they are living their life in constant terror. <laughs> I mean, we've given people plenty of opportunity to step forward. Um, at one stage, we invited the whole wedding to the place where the boat set sailed in Amsterdam and said, come forward now with information. This is your last chance. So we are giving people the options. And, yeah, someone's just uh, holding that back and, and just kind yeah. of going through life. Well, that's the problem. They didn't you know, hold it back. <laughs> so this whole thing came about. Exactly. Uh, Detective Lauren Kilby, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Kia ora, welcome to the project, everyone. Look, it's a Mark Richardson night. And Guy Williams is here. And I, I love that podcast so much. Mm. And I'm just, I'm just wondering, because it seems too common in Kiwi weddings. Like, what is it about weddings that brings out the absolute worst in people? That's true. <laughs> well, I mean, there's alcohol. Yeah. Um, but it seems to hit people a lot worse than it does at a bar, right? People do things they would never do in a normal public 
place of drinking. Oh, I have a theory, and I'm sorry to say it, and I take full responsibility for it being the same at my wedding, but weddings are a bit boring. Right. Like, you've got to sit there and, like, hear about the love and then, like, all the stuff, and then they go back in time, and then, mm. you like, you get through that bit, you have a little drink, and then speeches. Yeah. So th that, all that pressure builds up, and it's it's got to go somewhere. Firstly, I, I love the story, but it is, without doubt, a new low for the project. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't argue with that. Mate. But, but sort of, I guess you've just spent an exorbitant amount of money on on a wedding gift, so you're just going to get your money's worth at the wedding. No? <laughs> that means doing something on the bathroom. Mark, you sound like a suspect right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there is a second season planned. It's on a different story, a slightly cleaner story. But if you're interested, you can look up the first podcast. It's out now.